Let's go to uh, 359 in our home, in our uh, hymn book, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. 359. Oh, the bonds of prison. 
our Lord will return to the earth in some way. Our troubles will then all be old. The Master so gently will lead us away beyond that blessed heavenly shore. Living by faith, yes, living by faith. In, Jesus above, in Jesus above, trusting and
righteous now. Of course, God is the healer. Yeah. But he gave them wisdom and knowledge to treat me. So. But I kept telling everybody I came in the hospital Wednesday. Well, it happened to be Tuesday. I started out, I came to the food pantry and then I had been dizzy all morning. And Sherry then insisted that I need to go to the ER or someplace. She also called my daughter on me. <laughs> but I appreciate her doing that. I fussed at her, but still I appreciate her doing that. So Armay took me to the ER and then I mean, the doc, my doctor, Dr. Peterson's office first, and they checked, and they said, you need to go to the ER. So she took me to the ER, and they had, I was like eight people in the room checking me out, wiring me for sounds and everything. And they said they may have to shock me to stop me to uh, give me the rhythm, my heart rhythm, slow it down. But they gave me medication instead. But as I was laying there, they was giving me medication. I started singing this song. I sang it out loud to them. I'm trusting you, Lord. I'm trusting you. And in Proverbs 3, 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. So pray for me as I try to say, I'm trusting you, Lord. I'm trusting you.
All right, who's got the next one? Come on, Claire.
songs in her songbook. Does the waking us up. 
if it hadn't been for him, I wouldn't have woke up this morning. Amen. You can set all the clocks you want to, but when it comes to your appointed time, amen, you're not going to wake up unless he wants you to. Praise the Lord. And uh, But I'm thankful that I'm serving a, a God that can uh, help me through anything. Amen. amen. And I said this last, I believe my service, you know, I want to put my trust in someone that can help me. Yeah. Amen. Rather than someone that can't help me. Amen. And uh, God's good to us, church. Praise the Lord. Yes, Praise the Lord. If you got your Bible, go to the book of James, chapter 5. Very familiar scripture. Now I'm going to read just a little bit. I don't know where the Lord will take me just yet. But uh, I want your prayers. Yes. Praise the Lord, I need your prayers. Amen. I, I'm praying for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Without the anointing, I can do nothing. Amen. I can read the scripture. Praise the Lord. But I can't preach it the way the Lord wants it unless the anointing comes. Yes, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. So just be praying for me as I read the scripture. And as I say this very familiar scripture, we've heard it before, uh, but we may take it a little bit differently uh, each time we hear it. Praise the Lord. So, the book of James, chapter 5, beginning at the 13th verse, says, Praise the Lord. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil. In the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I like that 14th verse. Yes. Is any sick among you? Question. He's asking us. Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now if you uh, uh, pray over someone and you're not in the name of the Lord, it's not going to do a bit of good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You must pray for someone in the name of the Lord, believe in the Lord, believe in his word, and believe in that uh, he's going to move. Praise the Lord in whatever it is. And uh, he will move, church. Yes, he will. And uh, Sister Pat is an example of that. You know, if you, if you all had been there on Tuesday and you had saw her and you had seen what she was going through, uh, you probably wouldn't have given two cents for her life. Amen? But you know what? God brought her out of it. Yeah. Amen? You know, it was looking bad. It, it looked pretty bad. Praise the Lord. And, uh, you know, things can look bad sometimes and come out to the good. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. But, you know, it, uh, it was looking grim and uh, didn't look good and uh, you know, the first thing you'll think of when the doctor starts telling you these things that they're going to have to put monitors on you and they're going to have to do these kind of tests and that kind of test, you say, uh-oh. Huh. Well, and you, the first thing you're doing is thinking the worst. Amen? And But you know what? Uh, it's not always that way. Uh, but it looked pretty bad. But you know what? Prayers was going out. Amen. From the get go, from the start go, just as soon as we learned that Sister Pat was uh, uh, going through a sickness, uh, the prayers started going up right then and there. Amen. And you know what? And somebody touched the throne of God. Praise the Lord. You have to get a hold of the Lord to be touched. Amen. If you got a sickness, you have to get a hold of Him to get it fixed. Amen. To get it healed. Amen. It said, let him call for the elders of the church, praying over him, anointing him with all, in the name of the Lord. Not in someone else's name, amen, but in the name of the Lord, amen. You must reach the throne of God, the name of Jesus, amen. He is the ultimate healer today, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. And you know what, uh, but uh, as I was saying, you know, they were saying that they was going to do this test on her and they was going to do that test and we was... Already convinced that it was going to happen. 
We was already thinking, you know, well, she's got to go through this test and then she's got to go through that test, done telling what kind of other test. And then they was going to put the life vest on her and make her wear it home and all over the place. But you know what? When the prayers was going up for Sister Pat, you know, people love Sister Pat. Amen. They love her. Praise the Lord. And if you love someone, you're going to pray for them. Amen. And you're supposed to pray for those that despitefully use you the same way. Amen. Praise the Lord. But you know what? People love Sister Pat with all their heart. You know, we had, I don't know, at the people asking about her and uh, on every hand, you know, but there was a lot of prayers going up. And you know, I, I believe the more praying, the more uh, the more change you got that the Lord's going to touch, move in the situation. Amen. So, and the prayer, n number 15 verse says, And the prayer of faith shall sa save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. <laughs> Woo! Raise him up. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that's just what happened with Sister Pat. He raised her up. Here she is today. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. And it goes on to say in number 16, verse says, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. Amen. Now what did it say? Let's go back and read it again. Pay attention to what it's saying here. It says, confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Confess your faults. Sometimes we have to confess our faults one to another. Amen. Before we pray, come on. Huh? You can't get up and pray for somebody if you're burning up with faults. Come on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You can, but now where's it going to go? Amen. Is it going to go to the ceiling and stop, or is it going to keep right on going to the throne of God? Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but when I pray for somebody, I want the Lord to hear me. Amen? So I've got, if I've got a bunch of faults, you know, I need to tell someone about them that uh, they can pray for me. Amen? It's the same thing as being healed when you're sick. Amen? Come on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you want uh, free of faults, Pray about it. Get people praying for you. Confess your faults. It didn't say sins now. There's difference in a sin and a fault. Come on. Huh? Praise the Lord. You know, uh, I used to have a pretty bad fault. Uh, it wasn't a sin, but it was a fault. You know, I used to let my temper get hold of me sometimes. My temper get uh, all out of whack. You know, I, I'd come across certain things in my life. And uh, you know what? All right, I'm getting ready to preach. Praise the Lord. I feel <laughs> I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. But you know what? I used to let my temper get a hold of me quite often when I was younger. Praise the Lord. And I had to pray about it and I had to keep praying about it. And still sometime right today, you know, I'm still capable of doing it from time to time. Amen. So I have to tell someone about it and get them praying for me. Amen. That the Lord can make a better person of me. Amen. That when I pray for one of my brothers and sisters, when I lay my hands upon one of my brothers and sisters, I know that God's going to hear my prayer. Amen. And He's going to answer my prayer, Brother Jerry. Amen. He will answer your prayers, but you got to be in the place with Him. Amen. you got to be living for the Lord. you got to be living right. Amen. You may fall down from time to time, but you know what? you got to get right back up and go right on. Praise the Lord. And say, Lord, I'm going to serve you with my whole heart. Nothing but the heart, so help me God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if you do that, that's all that's required. But if you've got a lot of faults in your life, like I used to have the temper problem, Amen. It's still do from time to time, but it's not as bad as it used to be. Amen. Just like I came into the church yesterday, uh, we was uh, working on the truck, going to put a clutch in the truck, 
and uh, I had my boys helping me and I came up to the front of the church. I looked up on the porch there and they was an awful mess that ever was. Amen. You know what? They was uh, canned food and this and that sitting on the porch. Amen. And you know what? What happened was Friday, uh, Mickey had re told us that there was someone sitting on the front porch. All right. So evidently what they done, they come through the pantry, I guess. And they got their food or whatever. And then they decide they're going to come around to the front porch and sit on the front porch and eat it. Amen, or I guess, or whatever. But then they turn right around. While they was it, she said they, they was holding up a sign. Had a sign, holding up a sign. She didn't know what it said. And she didn't recognize it. So I didn't give it no thought, you know, until I came here yesterday. And I came up and up on the front porch there, and I saw that mess, and I said, my goodness, how can anyone do that to the house of the Lord? Just sit. Well. <laughs> Just sit right there and make that kind of mess. I'm not out yet. I got another. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I thought, well, now how can they do that? How can they sit on the porch out there? They come through the pantry and get their food and then they go sit on the porch. That, that was a blessing getting the food. Amen. But then they come on the front porch out here. Amen. And they uh, sit there and they make a mess. They just open it up, just throw it here, throw it there. And instead of taking it with them, they just leave it there. Amen. And then I looked around just a little bit closer and I saw something else and I'm not going to say what that was. Amen. So it told me that ever who it was, that's the reason they didn't have no food. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I don't have to say what it was. But you know what? A lot of people choose us to be that way. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, so that's what happened. And, and I kind of lost my, you know, I, I thought to myself, the first thing come to my mind, well, if I find out who this is that done this, he won't be coming back to the pantry no more. Amen. And he won't be sitting on the front porch anymore. Amen. So that's the first thing that comes to my mind. And then I thought, well, no, I can't do it that way now. That ain't the way. That ain't the way the Lord would have done it. Amen. He, he sit with the publicans and the sinners. Amen. So you can't do it that way. Amen. So what you got to do, you got to pray for the people. Amen. you got to reach the throne of God for the people. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, the fervent prayers of the righteous avail of much, no matter what they're doing or who they are. Come on. You've got to get under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And you have to touch the throne of God. But see, that's the way the flesh will do. He'll rise up in you sometime. And he'll cause you to think the things that you're not supposed to think. Amen. So that was the first thought. But I, you know what? I had to block that out. I said, no, I can't do that now. Come on. Because <laughs> when I start doing that... My prayers ain't going to amount to a hill of beef. Amen? Because it's a fault. It's a fault, but if you're not careful, it'll lead into a sin. Come on. Amen? Yeah. If you let it linger around, if you let a thought linger around long enough, it'll turn right into a sin. Come on. Amen? And before you know it, you're just as guilty as the man sitting on the front porch. Come on. Amen? So I don't want to be that way. Praise the Lord. I want to be able, when one of my brothers and sisters need me, I want to be able to go to them in prayer. Amen. And I want to be able to touch the Lord. Amen. <laughs> like the saying, reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. He will find he's not too busy to answer your prayers. Amen. Woo! He's passing by each moment. Woo! Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to be able to touch the throne of God with my prayer. Amen. We went over the other day and prayed for Sister Penny Lou. She was in good spirits. I tell you what she was doing. She was laying there smiling with her eyes. Amen. Huh? Praise the Lord. 
We walked into the room. She was asleep at first. And I kind of went, walked a little heavy just to see if I could kind of wake her up a little bit. And she raised it up and she didn't know who we was there for a minute. <laughs> and she's trying to figure it out, you know. And Sherry started talking to her and then she was looking at Sherry and she said, well, I, I, I think I know who you are. I recognize you. <laughs> and uh, and then I, I came over to her and I said, Benny Lou, and Sherry told her, said, uh, this brother Ernest, she said, okay. She said, yeah, yeah, yeah. That guitar player, she said. <laughs> she said, boy, you sure play that guitar. I said, no, I'm not that good. <laughs> I still need lessons. But anyway, we uh, we had a few words with her there, and she was in good spirits, I tell you. And she was smiling with her eyes. Amen. You ever seen anybody that way, just smile with their eyes? And that was such a beautiful sight. I thought, now, if I needed a prayer got through, I believe without a doubt that sister could get one through. Amen. Somebody that's got that much joy, they're, they're laying in the hospital. Amen. Now get it. They're laying in the hospital. The doctors is having to work on them. Amen. And, but she's laying there and she's smiling and in good spirits with her eyes. Amen. And uh, I went when we went to see Sister Pat, it was the same way. It was like she was smiling with her eyes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that's exactly why Sister Pat's sitting right here today. Amen. Because of the prayers of the righteous. Amen. And so many people love her. Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't want people not to like me. Amen. You know, the Bible talks about a good name. Huh? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to read this a little bit more. I'm going to try to make it quick. Uh, but you know how quick that is sometimes. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 4, beginning at the fourth verse. Praise the Lord. And this is the reason, beginning at the fourth verse, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. He said it again. He said it once, and then he went on and said it again. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Praise the Lord. You know, a lot of people got away from rejoicing in the Lord. Amen. They don't want to rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Huh? Amen. Praise the Lord. We got churches all over this country. We got a lot of them in uh, Knox County. Amen. But you know what? When you go to their church service, it seems like they just don't want to rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Is this, this thing's a little loud. I don't want to hurt people's heads. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But anyway, they don't want to, you know, we come to the house of the Lord to worship Him and to rejoice and lift up His name. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm glad He woke me up this morning. Amen. I want to rejoice and lift my hands and praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to be happy in the Lord. Amen. Because they are happiness in the Lord. Without the Lord, you don't have happiness. Amen. You don't have happiness. Amen. You're walking around spiritually dead. Come on. Amen. I was at one time walking around spiritually dead until the Lord reached down and touched me. Amen. Praise the Lord. He drove me to Him, and I accepted the invitation. Praise the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Listen what else it says. It says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Be careful in nothing. And when you... 
talk about being careful, that means not to be anxious about anything, not to fear anything. Amen. But to always rejoice in the Lord, no matter what. Amen. No matter what comes at you. Sometimes, you know, things come at us we don't even understand. We have to ponder, we'll, we'll try to ponder on it, wonder what it's about, what's happening. And uh, you know what the Bible says? Not to worry about it. Amen. Because we need to put our trust in the Lord more and more and more. Amen. Amen? And if you worry about something, listen. Uh, the enemy, that's a stronghold for the enemy. That's a sure way of not getting anywhere. That's a sure way of not being able to get a prayer through. When the Lord, you know, when someone needs a prayer, amen, if you're worrying about the cares of the world or you're worrying about your finances or this and that and the other or your uh, surroundings, amen, you go out somewhere and you say, well, uh, this person needs prayer, but I don't know if I ought to go in there and pray for him or not. And, that, and that's the first mistake when you do that. You're worrying. Come on. Being anxious and worrying. Praise the Lord. The Lord don't want us to do that. He don't want us to worry about anything. Amen. Praise the Lord. Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto who? God. Praise the Lord. Your request be known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if they be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. What did he say to do? To think on them. Amen. Think about rejoicing in the Lord always. Praise the Lord. Be careful in nothing. Think about that always. Amen. Praise the Lord. Think on these things, he said. Those things which you have both learned and received, and heard and seen in me. Do, he said. And the God of peace shall be with you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me have flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Amen. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere, all in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. This is what 13 says. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Amen. Praise the Lord. All things. Amen. Praise the Lord. Nothing is impossible to them that believe. Amen. If you believe in the Lord, amen, nothing is impossible. God's good all the time. He's the same God as he was over 2,000 years ago. He said, I've changed not. He's never changed. He ain't going to change. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I say this a lot. You know, sometimes I'll get up in the morning time. You know, I'm going to tell you this. Yesterday, when we got through with the truck, you know, it took just about all day. And uh, it was close to 80 degrees under that. Well, probably <laughs> cooler or hotter than that under the truck. But. Anyway, it got so hot, I'm telling you. And uh, I wasn't feeling real good anyway. You ever have one of them days where you just don't feel good? <laughs> the bones is aching and uh, your belly is trying to knot up on you and everything else. Well, I was kind of having one of them days and I said, Lord, I need your help. 
we've got to get the cut fixed. And I said, this is the only day I'm going to be able to do it. So I've got to have your help. I need your strength. I'm going to have to get my mind off my sickness, and I'm going to have to get under there, and I'm going to have to have your strength. And uh, so I got under that thing, and we worked on it about, uh, took us about seven and a half to eight hours to do it. <laughs> and you know what? That thing weighed about 500 pounds, and I'm telling you, it's everything we can do to get it lined back up. I told the boys, I said, well, it'll probably be easier going back than it was coming out. Oh, boy, was I wrong. <laughs> and I've done them before, but you know what? We had time with that thing. And, uh, but you know what? I, we was under there about seven and a half to eight hours, and I crawled out and knew that thing, and I just barely couldn't move. It took me five minutes to drag myself out from under the truck. And uh, I told them boys, you may have to get me by the feet and drag me out. But anyway, I got out from under the thing, and uh, I managed to make my way to the house. And I told Sherry, I said, I'm not feeling good at all. I said, I don't know if I'm getting a stomach virus or what it is, but my stomach was uh, killing me. It may be because I was up under that truck of straining and bending. But anyway... And I told her, I said, if I'm feeling like this tomorrow, see, that's the first thing we want to do. Huh? I said, if I'm feeling like this tomorrow, I may not get to go to church. Huh? Ain't that just like somebody to say something like that? Huh? See, that's the worst. Huh? Well, that's what I said. I said, yep, I may not get to go. I hope I do get to go. But I said, I may not. The way I'm feeling right now, I was worn out, I'm telling you. I, I just fell down, seemed like, when I got out. But you know what? The Lord gave me strength. Yeah. Amen. I prayed. I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, help me with this. I said, I don't want to have to miss church tomorrow. I said, I want to go to church. And uh, I said, man, I just need your touch. I need my, my Lord to touch me. And you know what? He did. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I guess he done it while I was asleep. <laughs> huh? Because when I woke up, I felt totally different. I told Sherry this morning, I said, I believe I can eat something. I feel pretty good. And I said, you know, I, I, I was thinking in my thoughts, well, I get to go to church today. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I said, thank you, Lord, for helping me with that. Praise the Lord. And he did. He'll help you. He's present help in the time of trouble, church. No matter what it is, I can do all things through who? Christ that strengthens me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anything. Don't matter. But here's the key to it, church. The closer you get to him, the better your chances are. Amen. He said, if you try draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. And a lot of people don't just get so close, and that's as close as they want to get. And they think, well, that's good enough. I don't need to be no closer. I'm all right. I'm in a comfort zone. <laughs> but you can still get closer. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, years back, you'd see... Uh, Miracles happened. Miracles took place. Amen. Like the woman with the issue of blood I was talking about the other night. Twelve long years she had. Amen. But then Jesus passed by and she said, but if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I can be made whole. And that's what happened. Amen. If we can just touch the Lord. If we can just reach out and touch the Lord. Amen. And it, it's that simple if you want to live up to the standards. Amen. People don't want to live right. Tell it like it is. People think they've got a choice. They can just live any old way they want to. And it's okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just like these uh, uh, pride thing and uh, twisting the rainbow all out of shape and this and that. Trying to claim it's one way when I know what it is. Amen. It's God's promise. Huh? It's a symbol of His promise. 
Ain't got nothing to do with pride. Praise the Lord. And I, I tell you, I'm totally against this uh, when the uh, people's calling right, wrong, and wrong, right. Amen. Huh? Come on, I'm totally against it. You know, it's up to the Christian people. We should be in a place with the Lord to do something about this. Amen. All these things that's going on in the land. Christian people need to wake up out of their sleep, church. Come on. And get on fire for God. Amen. Like it was years ago, you know, when you pull up and hit the parking lot and you could hear the music jamming, you could hear people shouting and shaking the building. Amen. And you don't see it no more. Praise the Lord. You see it on TV a lot, but I'm going to tell you something. A lot of them being paid to do it. Come on. Huh? You believe it? A lot of them being paid to act like that. Here, here it is. You've got to know the difference. Praise the Lord. You've got to know. The Lord said, My sheep know my voice. And a stranger they will not follow. Amen. And he knows us. Praise the Lord. And a lot of these uh, t television evangelists and stuff, they'll pay, they pay their musicians. I've said this before. They'll pay, uh, they'll pay them so much to get in the pulpit and play the music. Don't matter whether they're living right or not. Come on. Huh? As long as they can play the guitar good or whatever, or beat the drums good, they'll pay them. Amen? And they make a good salary. Praise the Lord. But here's the thing. That's not the real thing. Amen? And they'll, they'll pay people to bow out in the spirit and everything else. But it ain't the spirit that they're bowing out in. Huh? Come on. It's their self. Hmm? Praise the Lord. Self. Self-inflicted. Come on. Praise the Lord. It's the devil spirit. <laughs> it's the devil spirit. Yes. That's exactly what it is. And there's a devil spirit going all over this nation right now. There's a suicide spirit going around this nation, taking young people's lives and everything else. There's this pride thing that's going around. So, uh, people don't know who they are. They don't know which way they are. Come on. Amen. And I'm telling you, I'm totally against it. I'm dead set against it. I will not agree with it. Amen. No way, no fashion. I'm going to stand on God's word. What does say it? The word of God. Amen. Amen. But we have to get in a place with the Lord. Brother Danny, he uh, talked about it here the other night. Being in a place with the Lord. Being in that relationship with the Lord. Amen. we got to get in a relationship with the Lord. If you want to see results and change, they talk about change. They talk about change in the White House. They talk about change in the nation and this and that and the gas prices and all this. But if you really, really, really want to see change, you put your trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because man will fail you. Come on. Praise the Lord. Put your trust in someone that can help you. Amen. Get closer to the Lord. Build a relationship with the Lord. Like Brother Danny was talking. If you got a relationship with the Lord, he said sometimes you have to give up things. You have to lay this down or lay that down. Amen. To get in that relationship with the Lord. Amen. Maybe you eat too much. Come on. Huh? Did you know you can eat too much and make a sin out of it? Come on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm going to tell you something, church. There's a whole lot to serving the Lord. People say, well, you know, <laughs> it, there's a whole lot to it. But here's the thing. It's easy. Huh? What did he say? He said, my yoke is what? Huh? Come on. You didn't believe me, did you? <laughs> Come on. Woo! And my burden is light. Amen. And the only thing that we have to put up with, the Lord's going to help you along the way. The only thing that God's people has to put up with is that old hound and devil. Huh? You're going to have to put up with him. Amen. But you know what? This day is coming. It's coming after a while. After a while, it'll all be over. After a while, the 
the sun's gonna shine. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That, that was the song I was After a while, woo, gray skies will pass over, and I'll sing hallelujah. After a while, amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to sing hallelujah after a while. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know what? I feel good. Amen. Amen. Do you feel good? Amen. Feel good in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sister Pat's got a glow about her today. <laughs> Woo! We all got a glow. That same Lord. Amen. All right. I guess I've said enough. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God's good, church. Amen. He's been good to us. And I just can't thank him enough. Praise the Lord. You know, I could I could write a list from here out to the highway out there, and it still would be enough to thank the Lord for what he's done in my life and my family and my church family. Amen. You know, the Lord's done a lot here at Christian Life Church. And he's going to continue working and doing things, and giving us ideals. Amen. And he's just awesome, church. We have to put our trust in him, believe in him, without a doubt. You can't doubt. You have to believe. All things are possible to them that believe. Amen. Amen. And I just thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for each and every one of you to come out here today. Uh, I'm looking for, you know, I had a dream the other night, and I'll tell you, it was a dream. But uh, I dreamed that we come into this church and every pew was full. Huh? And I'm talking, I'm talking, they was young people in the pews. Uh, they was middle-aged people in the pews. It was awesome sight. And I dreamed about that, and, and the Lord showed me that people's coming in. Amen. That we must believe. We must keep on praying. Don't let up on our prayers. And you're going to see something. You're going to see something take place. Amen. He rest assured me that it was coming. Amen. So I don't know when, but it's coming. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And he's already... You know, working that way. He's already doing it in church. Right before our very eyes. Amen. He's amazing. But I thank the Lord for the church. Thank the Lord for the members in the church. Thank the Lord for Brother Gary being over here with us. We love him. I tell you why he was a big help in that yard sale. He, uh, I tell you, he worked hard. And uh, if he hadn't showed up when he did... Uh, you know, I was already praying about it, and I said, man, I just don't know if I'll be able to do it or not. But then when he come, I seen, seen him come, and I said, praise the Lord, there he is. There's our help in the present time of trouble. And then he just gave me a little more spunk. I seen him working, and I thought, well, I better get up and go work. <laughs> so I, I started working. But see, sometimes we need that motivation. I was sitting there, and already wore out, you know. And uh, but when he started working, he came, and showed up, started working. It just motivated me to want to do more. So we all pitched in a little earnest. He helped us out. And his uh, wife's cousin. And I tell you what, we had a good good time in the art sale. Amen. Amen. It was hard. It's a lot of hard work. But, uh, you know, they're going to be a payday after a while. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But uh, anyway, don't let up on the donations for the, the food truck. Uh, we're in the process of trying to, trying to get us one. We don't know if it's going to go through or not, but uh, we still need donations for the food truck. Uh, as far as donations for the yard sale goes, I don't really want to take no more donations for the yard sale. Unless that it would be some type of uh, maybe furniture pro products, maybe little end tables or something, you know, that's 
something that you know you can move. Right. But uh, we don't want to take any more uh, home uh, products like, uh, yeah, I guess, what would you call Yeah, essentials. That's the word. Essentials. <laughs> home essentials. And we don't want to take no more clothes. We got... <laughs> We got so many clothes that it takes forever to get them put up. We need to sell some of them. Amen. So, so I think we're good on that. And don't forget now, the chosen. We've been watching it on Wednesday night on this uh, projector screen here. Uh, we're in chosen season three, or no, yeah, episode two, coming up. And uh, we kind of went around it this week on account of Sister Pat being in the hospital. We didn't want to uh, proceed with it without her being here. Didn't want her to miss it. But uh, this Wednesday night, good Lord's will, we'll be here at 6 o'clock to, to watch episode 2. And uh, if you got anything on your heart you want to say, then, you know, by all means, we want you to be obedient to the Spirit. The Spirit's here then, too. Amen. Amen. We have good ones. Good Bible studies. And after we get done with the chosen, good Lord's will, we'll go into our regular Bible study. And uh, you never get too old to learn anything about the Lord. We need to know all we can about Him. Amen. We're not going to know it all. But uh, we still need to know as much as we possibly can. He said, study, show yourself approved. Amen. We all need approval. He is approval. Amen. All right. Has anyone got anything on their heart before we dismiss? Brother Ernie, five years ago, I started to the doctor, and I don't remember anything for two weeks. Yeah. And if it hadn't been for prayer, I would not be here. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And I've had spells at home for about four o'clock. And I just smothering real bad. I had to just wake up and think I was going to get my breath. Yeah. And I've just asked the Lord to let me live a while longer. Praise the Lord. Not better. Yeah. And it's all in asking Him. Right. Yeah. Praise the Lord. He's the He's the one that holds the key. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's up to Him, Church. And uh, he's been good to you, Sal. Praise the Lord. He's been good to you. He's been good to each and every one of us. And uh, just like he said, he would. Amen. He said he would. Amen. Praise the Lord. Has anyone got anything else on their heart? I do ask for your continued prayers that I'll yeah. continue to get better. And, Praise the uh, Lord. That I'll do what I'm supposed to do as far as yeah. my breathing machine and all of that. That right. I'll do what they tell me to do. Praise the Lord. Because I'm supposed to go to Florida, leave the 22nd, and I'm going to be in the special to make that trip. Yeah. And by the way, the offering, the ties was $59, and the offering was $59. For all right. Well, what about that? $118. Even up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a good hand clap. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm glad you reminded me of that, Pat. I kind of let it slip my mind again. Okay. Do that sometime. But uh, anyway, has anyone got anything on their heart before we dismiss? We want Brother Gary to come back and be with us again. Amen. Praise the Lord. Enjoyed having him. And, uh, you know, he's <laughs> that part of the church back there needs somebody sitting there in that seat anyway. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But uh, anyway, is anybody?